weather be cold, whether the weather be hot, well, whether the weather, no matter the weather, whether we like it or not. So today you're here, and I'm so glad that you came. It is going to be one of those shortened services this morning. We are going to go through the whole thing, but there's some things we'll uh, cut out, uh, do because I want to make sure everyone's safe. But thank you for coming out this morning to celebrate the first of December in church, right? The first of the month. Hey, it's good that you're in the house of the Lord. So we're excited to hear you this morning. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this for this morning. But thank you for the folks who weathered the weather this morning. But we ask that uh, this time will be a profitable time for you. But we just came, uh, Lord, so that we could hear from your word this morning. Lord, how we need it in this time that we live in today. Lord, we thank you so much for uh, allowing us to be here together. Lord, thank you for a house that we can uh, come to. Lord, a church we can come worship you in. But we ask that those who couldn't make it, Lord, that they'll be watching. And Lord, that they'll uh, be able to uh, experience what we're experiencing here, Lord. Uh, we love you. We thank you for what you mean to us. Name pray. Amen. Um. Let's continue singing hymn number 100. Oh, come on, ye faithful 100.
the plan on that and come if you can to help out. Uh, prayer meeting Tuesday evening here at the church at 7. I think by Tuesday the weather's supposed to clear, so we should be good there. Uh, poinsettia orders are due next week, so if you haven't done yours, uh, do it and get it in by next week. We should be getting those in and, and after that and enjoying them here in the sanctuary. Next week also, uh, Sarah Wetmore will be with us. And uh, I encourage the ladies especially to make an effort to be out for Sunday school because I understand she's going to be ministering to the ladies in Sunday school. So you'll get a whole Sunday school class full of Sarah and then uh, she'll be sharing during the morning service just a little bit. If you can come early for Sunday school, you'll get Sarah. and uh, We'll be taking a love offering for her next week. So make sure you come prepared for that. What else? Oh, well, looking farther ahead, um, Pastor is planning a candlelight Christmas Eve service. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have that on your calendar yet, mark it. And uh, so I plan to come for that. And is it too early to start inviting for that, Pastor? Never. That's not too early to start inviting for that. And uh, you're working on flyers and handouts. We'll be here this week. All right, so that's coming. And hope you can be excited about that here at the church. Uh, we hope to have communion next week also. So next week's going to be a full week. Uh, we'll move the right hand of fellowship to there. Last Sunday evening, Pastor White and Mrs. White got to meet Rob and Sue Andrews. And uh, I think they fell in love with them like we did. I don't know. Great people uh, working there in Portersville to bring that church to self-supporting. And uh, they, uh, the Andrews are our missionaries of the month. We got a nice picture of them on the back and a little write-up. Send them a, a note or a card. Give them a call. Encourage them. Pray for them special this month as they labor down there. The Lord's doing great things down there. Any other announcements I might have missed? I think I hit most of them. All right, we're gonna have we're gonna sing one verse of Away in the Manger, then we're gonna shake hands. So number eighty-six. <laughs>
which is, please come Tuesday night. Uh, it's a good time for us to get together again and to, to fellowship with the Lord. I've always said this, and I will continue to say this, one service a week is not enough. We need more. Uh, the Bible says so much more as we see the day approaching. We need more church. We need more time to fellowship with the Lord. One service a week is not going to help with that. So if you can be here on Tuesday night, please be here. We had a great time last Tuesday. We had 23. The Lord just blessed. And, uh, we just had a good time just uh, fellowshipping together, praising the Lord. And uh, we were just able to be together for that. So please be here Tuesday. Uh, we're going to talk about the Christmas decorating uh, for the ladies. Uh, depending on the weather, we'll get a hold of everybody if we're going to continue with uh, the decorating on Monday. And if not, then we'll move it off to Tuesday. But we will get it done this week. And uh, the ladies Bible study as well. If you don't have it Monday, we'll see if we can push it to Tuesday. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk to you. We'll make sure you have a good advance uh, notice uh, for that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm forgetting. Uh, again, just be in prayer for those folks who are not here this morning. Of course, the weather. Uh, and also, I uh, heard there was a bunch of uh, accidents already. Uh, so, uh, just be in prayer for those. Be careful going home. I'm pushing this through, so we'll be out of here on time this morning. Maybe before uh, 12 o'clock. That's my plan. So uh, at this time we have our offering. Uh, we'll have our usher please come. Uh, we're going to pray. And then we'll uh, bring our tithes and offering to the Lord. Uh, it's so important for us to, to give. It's the first of the month. But it's always important for us to give to the Lord. Uh, why give to Him? Well, because what He has given to us. And let's keep that in our minds this morning as we give. Our Heavenly Father, thanks so much for this morning. Lord, thank you for the folks again who came out. Lord, we thank you for this time that we have Lord, to give back to you. Lord, there's so much you've given to us. Lord, there's so much that we can thank you for. And Lord, I just ask that you will just help us to give with a cheerful heart this morning. Lord, be with the sermon. Be with everything that goes on. We love you. Thank you for what you mean to us. Name pray. Amen. Christ. 
And as we go through the series of Christmas Through the Eyes, we're going to start off, of course, today, this morning with the shepherds. We're going to see what the shepherds thought about Christmas and how they saw it through their eyes and how they saw it through their point of view. And then we're going to move on to our series, and by Christmas time, hopefully we'll see what the, the meaning of Christmas is all about. And uh, many folks, uh, I, I was reading on this yesterday, many folks, they really don't understand the meaning of Christmas. They don't understand why we put the tree up. They don't understand those things. And I was thinking about the other day, uh, my wife and I were talking about, you know, the presents for Christmas. You know what that represents? That was the presents that the wise men gave to, to Jesus. You know, the Christmas tree was the tree that, that when Christ was born, but soon in his life, he would hang on that tree for us to take the sins of the world. The lights that are around the tree that we hang up, or we as Christians, we're supposed to be the light of the world. That's what our job is. And then the star we placed on top of the tree was the star they, they followed to see Christ and to see him wrap his water and clothes. And he was the present for us that Christ gave. And you know, many people, they don't understand why they have a Christmas tree up. They don't understand why we as Christians, we get so excited about Christmas time and uh, about this season. But it's because for us, there's a meaning. For us, there's a reason. And so as we read this, read this morning, just think about that. Luke chapter number 2, verse number 8, we'll begin reading. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to you all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a... The angel of the multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go, even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph in the big lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told then by the shepherds. This morning I want us to understand the Christmas story through the eyes of the shepherds. Now when we first think about the shepherds throughout history, shepherding was a noble profession. It was something that was was known to folks, and it was nothing that was uh, degrading, but it was very honorable for someone to be a shepherd. Well, who are some? Well, Abel, he was the very first shepherd. And Abel was a shepherd, Abraham was a shepherd, Isaac was a shepherd, Jacob was a shepherd, Moses, and then David. And we think about all these men who were shepherds for the Lord, and of course, back in those times, shepherding was very honorable. People looked at them and they knew that, that the, what came with shepherding was, well, they were men of, of hard-working people. They were men who did, it, did their job. But as time went on, this profession itself just started being known as degrading. As time went on, folks really didn't want to be a shepherd. Well, maybe because there was work that was entailed with being a shepherd. Maybe it was because, well, they, they weren't doing the things that other folks would be, would be able to do. But as time went on, shepherding actually became second to last before the lepers. When they had the class of folks, of course, the, the king would be the first thing, and then it went down, and it went down, I guess they would say like a triangle, of course, they had the first person, would be the, the, most person, the, the best person to, to, to be, and then it went down to the classes. And second to last was shepherds. And then the last of the class was going to be the lepers. So how could something so, so honorable be something so degrading when folks said, oh, you're a shepherd. They just looked at you, oh, stay away from me. That's, that's disgusting. I don't want to be part of that. And as we think this morning, why would Christ, why would God himself come 
to shepherds. Why would he do that? What were these shepherds thinking when they saw the angel of the Lord appear on the, unto them? What were they thinking? What were they, what were they doing at the time? But how unusual was it for angels to appear before the shepherds? Well, let's consider the title of the shepherds. Let's consider their ceremonial uncleanness. Well, many of these shepherds themselves, because of their work, and they were unable to attend religious services because they were considered unclean. When they thought about their, their work, many of us, if you, you know anything about shepherds, their, their job is very disgusting. When, when uh, the, I was about to say here, I'm thinking about Brother Eric over here hunting, you know, but we're not, not deer, we're thinking about sheep, right? When these sheep, they would get, uh, they would have to be t uh, taken care of. They would have to be cut. They would have to put uh, some type of ointment around their eyes so that when they got some type of sickness, the sheep, they would rub their eyes together and, and contract sicknesses. So these shepherds, they were doing a hard job, taking care of them, feeding them, moving them. And so when folks thought about them, and when, before they were going to the ceremonial, uh, in order for them to get into that, they would have to clean up. But, of course, their job was a 24-7, seven-day-a-week job. So they weren't able to go into the church services, what they would say, or be in, in some of those ceremonies because they were considered unclean. And nobody would like to be seen with people who were unclean. So not only was that a problem they had, but they were also isolated and forgotten. Well, they were isolated and forgotten. Why? Well, because they moved around a little. Their job entailed them for, well, if this field over here was getting dried up and it wasn't, uh, didn't have enough grass there and they didn't have water, well, then they would have to move. So because their flocks needed to move around to find new grass and, and fresh water, they never stayed in one, one place for long. So they would be called maybe a gypsy. They would be wandering place to place and following after and, and making sure the sheep were okay. So they were isolated and forgotten about. It. Because one week they would be here, and the next week they would be over there. Maybe not even a week, maybe one day. They would just find a field and it's enough to suit them for just one day. They would have to move to another field. And so they were isolated and forgotten about. It. They were usually by themselves. They really weren't were people who, who were like, oh, let's go see the shepherd today. It wasn't like that. They were by themselves. They were lonely. They were most of the time forgotten about because they moved around so much. So not only did, were they considered unclean, but they were also isolated and forgotten about. Well, another thing about the shepherds, they were treated with mistrust. People didn't trust them. Well, because they were suspect of stealing from others and, and would often confuse thine for mine, their, their testimony was never allowed in court because they were so unreliable. So people didn't trust them, well, because they were moving place to place. And then it came to a point where, of course, they had to live for themselves that some of the shepherds, they would steal. And they would have to lie about how they got their things. And so when people looked at them, they were like, we can't trust them. So not only were they unclean to people, people didn't want to get around them because they were dirty and disgusting. And their job entailed for them to do so much. Not only were they forgotten about and isolated, and no one really wanted to talk to them. And so they just thought of them of being in the back of the, of the desert, you can say, like Moses, how he was by himself in the back of the desert, just isolated from others. That's how they weren't forgotten about. But they were treated as, as thieves and they were mistrusted. Nobody trusted them. They couldn't be trusted. So people looked at them like, you don't want to trust those shepherds. And their word is not, not good. They lie about everything. They, they, don't, they don't really have a good word. But they also were known for being brash and bold. Think about it. If they're by themselves, in the, in the field by themselves, no one's around, they were said to have the most filthiest mouths. They probably cussed. They probably uh, didn't really care of what they said. Why? Because there weren't people around. So if they were to say something, maybe the only person that really would hear them would be God or their sheep. And what more, what, what's, what more can a sheep say, really, than that, right? I mean, they wouldn't say anything to them, so... Living out in the fields away from society made them unappealing to most people. They were probably very awkward when they maybe were talking to people. People looked at them and maybe someone would ask them a question. They were like, uh, 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 are you talking to me? Are, 
Are you sure you're talking to me? But most of the time they had those bad mouths and they were ready to fight the drop of a hat. If someone said anything wrong to them, their first thing, their first intent, well, I don't want to fight them. Why? Because that was their job. You think about shepherds in the Bible, you know, these men, they weren't weak. You think about David and how David had to fight off the lion and the bear, protecting his sheep. And you think about Moses and how Moses himself brought the, the, his, his flock to the back of the desert and there the Lord would speak to him there. And so it was a, it was a tar, tiresome job. They never got to sleep. Most of the time they were awake and taking care of, of these sheep. And we think for the angels to come to the shepherds was very unusual for the people to understand. You know, why didn't, why didn't God come to the scribes? Why didn't He go to the kings? Why didn't He go to the priests? But why did He choose to go to the shepherds? Now, I don't know if many of you ever thought that before, but I always think those things. I always ask questions. Why did He go to a shepherd? Why did He, why did he not choose to go to the kings and the scribes and the, the folks who have, of, of that were very noble in those times, why did he choose to go to shepherds? Nasty, filthy mouth shepherds. They crushed the story through their eyes. And here's the answer, I believe, is very simple because God always works in ways that don't make sense to us. Isn't that true? God works in ways that don't make sense to us. Because if he went to the kings, then, well, that should have happened because they're, they're up there. They, they should be approved to God. And if God put them in that place, then, then, then God should deliver a message to the kings. But it wasn't to them. And think about it. It wasn't to a prophet. It was to a shepherd. And so when folks thought about this, they're thinking, that makes no sense. Well, why would the Lord go to the shepherd? And I'll get to that. But what can we learn from these shepherds this morning? If you and I are going to see the Christmas story through their eyes, then what can you and I learn this morning? What can we take from learning? What can we take from Luke chapter number two and apply it to our lives this morning? What can we do in order for us not to forget Christmas? Not, not for us to understand the importance of what these shepherds really did. Number one this morning, I want us to see that they were attentive. Attentive. Verse number 8, it says, They were keeping watch over their flock by night. The shepherds were very devoted to their job, that they would never let their flock alone. I said this earlier, you think about it, they never left their flock to themselves. Their job permitted them, and they were, they were supposed to stay with their sheep, no matter, no matter the weather, no matter how many sheep they had, no matter what it cost them, they were supposed to be attentive to their job. They were supposed to work hard. At night they said that as the shepherds were closing down and it was getting late at night, what they would do is they would meet in a field. And they would get them in a, uh, some type of uh, game kind of thing, or they got them in a field, and what they would do is they would, uh, they, they would get them in a fold. And so what they would do is they would get the sheep in there, and many of the shepherds, they would get together sometimes, and they would get the sheep all together, and they would have one shepherd laying down by the gate so that none of the sheep got out, but also none of the, the predators would come in. And so you think about their lifestyle and, and their job. It was 24-7. But they were very attentive to their job. If one were to leave, they would go after that one. If one was had a disease, they would separate that one from all the others and just take care of that one. Because that was their job, to be attentive to their job. They watched them 24-7. At night, the sheep, they would, they would get together and they would do those things. And, and by morning time, of course, then they would move again. And then notice that God came to these who were attentive at their job that they were given to do. You know something that we can learn from these shepherds is that God comes to people who are doing their job. Who are attentive to doing the job that God has given them. You see, these folks themselves, yes, this may be a job that nobody else wanted, but they were very, very precise in what they were doing. Knowing that no matter what, no matter what people say about me, this is my job. 
And this morning, what can we take from them? Well, God has given all of us a job to do. God has entrusted us with His words. Did you notice that the word of God and the gospel message wasn't given to the angels to, to give? No, but it was given to us. And our responsibility this morning and, and for the rest of our lives is to make sure that folks get the gospel in their hands. That's why it's important for us to have tracks that are on us. Because our job is to give out tracks and tell folks about the gospel. You think about that, that God did not give the gospel message to angels, but He gave it to us. He entrusted us with His words. He gave the words to us. And our job is to be attentive to what He's given us to do. Are you being attentive this morning? Is there a ministry in the church that maybe you're a part of and God is telling you this is your area I need you to do it with your best ability? I need you to go at this and understand that this is your job. This is something that you need to be attentive at. The application is whatever God has called you to do, be attentive to it and do it with the best of your ability. Christmas through the eyes of these shepherds, well, they were attentive to what they were given to do. They were at doing their father's business. They were at doing their job. They were attentive to what God has called them to do. Well, secondly, this morning, they were awed. What were they awed about? Well, we look in verse number 9, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. When they saw the angel of the Lord, they saw, the, they saw the Shekinah glory of the Lord, and they shook in their sandals. Well, what, what were they doing here? They were in awe of God. You can think about right away, these, these sh uh, shepherds were probably thinking, oh no, the Lord's come to me, I wonder what I said this week. Or I wonder what I did this week. And they are probably confessing their sin right away, like, Lord, I'm so sorry for my mouth. Lord, I'm so sorry I wasn't doing what you wanted me to do. But they were in awe. They no longer could stand, but instead they knelt at their knees to show God the respect that He deserved. So when they stayed, they, they were there and they were in awe of the, of the whole thing. And I could just put myself in, in their sandals real quick and just, really just think. You know, I'm out doing my job and then here comes God. And nobody else would speak to, to a shepherd. Nobody else would want to be even known or be put around with these shepherds. But God was able to come down to us and, and speak to us. They probably thought that the Lord was there to kill them for their sins. But instead, the angel of the Lord told them, Fear not, for I bring you good tidings of great joy. They were standing in awe. They were there, and yes, of course, they were with their sheep, but when they saw that kind of glory of God, they stood in awe. You know, something for us to understand, too, is when we go throughout our days and we go throughout our our life that God has given us, when's the last time you and I, we, we were in awe of God? That we saw the wonders of God and nothing that we could do and all we could do is say, oh, God, you're so great. God, you're such a great God. And Lord, I'm just standing, Lord, not just standing, but Lord, I'm kneeling in awe. But when was the last time that you and I honestly got on our knees and we were in awe of our God. We stood and yes, we, we, we say it with our words and many times, you know, they're vain words. We say, God, you're such a great God. God, we thank you, we love you, we do all this for you. But could you say that you were on your knees this morning giving God the glory He deserves? Being in awe of all that He does. You know, being in awe of creation, being in awe of, of the life that He's given us. That the season itself, the Christmas season, is not just a season that we get to get, but we get to give. Are you staying at all of that? Wonder when the last time you and I were in awe. Has it been a while since we hit our knees before Him? Has it been a while? Or would you say this morning, you know, I actually, I stood in awe of God. I've seen God do some basic things. I've seen God you know, bring me through hard times in my life to bring me to where I am now. 
But do you, you and I would stand in awe of God? So not only were they attentive about their work, not only did they stand in awe, lastly this morning they were accepted. They accepted it. But what did they accept, Pastor? Well, let's go to verse number 10. I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. What did they accept? They accepted the gospel. They accepted the words of God. They accepted those. They accepted the gospel. They believed what the angel of the Lord told them. Not only did the angel come to them and say, Hey, we're bringing you good news and good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, but it says, I bring you. And many of us can sit here this morning and say, We accepted that gift that God has given to us of salvation. Many of us can say that we accepted that free gift. That we know that when we're dying to, uh, today, that heaven will be our home. But you know, folks, it's not just to us. I bring you good time to great joy. But it also says, which shall be to all people. Now, something we can learn from the shepherds this morning is that not only that we have to accept the free gift, but we also have to give it out. Now, we weren't just saved to sit in pews, but we're saved to serve. When's the last time you told somebody about the gospel? When's the last time, and I understand we just got these tracts, but when's the last time you gave a tract to someone? When's the last time you told someone of, of the gospel that God has given to us? That for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That none of us are righteous, no, not one. When's the last time we gave that out? You know, these shepherds themselves, they had to accept that gift too. They had to, to look at God and say, either I'm going to accept it, or I'm going to look at it and you're crazy, I'm out of here. But they literally said, we accept. They got down on their knees and they said, Lord, whatever you want us to do, we'll do it. And what they, what they do, the angel Lord came to them and said, I need you to give to all people. And right away, they, they were people who were attentive at their job. But at that time when they accepted that gift, what they do? They left their sheep and they went and they, they told. The Bible says that people were in wonder. Now, they could look at that and say, I don't believe what you're saying. Or they could have said, you're, you're telling me that God came to shepherds to give them the news, to give to us, that there's going to be a child born and he's going to take the sins of, our world, of, the, the sins of this world away. Are you saying that he came to shepherds? And I'm saying he did. Now, many of us accept that free gift. We all know we're going to spend eternity when we die. But have you told someone about it? Have you allowed God to get a hold of our lives? To really accept the free gift? You know, it's, it's only so much that we can accept it. To take it in our own life and say, yes, I, I accept Christ as my personal Savior. But it's when we have to give it out to someone and tell someone about it. That's when, honestly, we as Christians, we get afraid. We want to hold back and we want to uh, I don't know about that. But some things that we can learn. So the question was, why did Christ come to the shepherds? Why didn't he go to the kings? Why didn't he go to the scribes? Why didn't he go to the prophet? I believe it was because the Lord was telling us that he's come to all men. You see, he didn't just come to the noble, the well-known people. But he died and he came to earth for even the lowly of people. So when it comes to us as we leave this morning and we see Christmas in the eyes of the shepherds, know that Christ came for all. It wasn't just for the rich. It wasn't just for those who are well-known and maybe those in politics. Well, no, it wasn't just for them. But it was for people like me. People like you, who don't deserve God's mercies and God's goodness, but you know what He did? He, he came to us simple ones. And He died on the cross for you and I, that we could have eternity with Him in heaven. And how we, you and I need to stand in awe about that. Now, every time I think about my salvation and what God did for me, you know, I can't help but think and, and thank God, because I can... I should be on my way to hell. 
I should spend eternity in hell. But God's goodness came not just to the rich, not just the well-known, not just the powerful, but to the shepherd, to you and I. Though people may, we may came from a place where nobody really looked at us and thought of us as anything special, but know that Christ still died for us. So pastor, those who, who live in the trailers, and, you know, they may not have that much money. You say Christ died for them? Yep. Yes, he did. Because he's not willing that any should perish. But all should come to repentance. You see, as we look at the Christmas story through the eyes of the shepherds, yes, maybe to folks of that time it was, it was rare for God to come to someone that is so degraded, second to last to the lepers. And yet God delivered great news to them. Folks, as we leave this morning, I, I want to challenge us. I've already been encouraged with some folks who, who have grabbed those tracks and have handed them out to folks. And that's what, literally, that's what we're here to do. Not only for us, the angel says, I'm giving it to you, but also to all people. Our job is to take it and to give it to others. That's the, that's, that was the Christmas story through the eyes of the shepherds. That they got the message, not only for them, but also to give to other people. And folks, we have a message this morning. We have the words of God. And our job is to not hold this to ourselves. And take the book and, and take what God has given us and hold it to ourselves. Well, I'm going to heaven, that's good. It's just me, I'm going to heaven. But it's to take the words of God and to pass it on to others. And just say, folks, can I tell you what God did for me? Could I tell you the love of God and what it means to me? Could I tell you a Christmas story? And you know, I know you may think of it as something else, but can I tell you what the Bible says about what Christmas is all about? Folks, as we leave this morning, I hope you understand the Christmas story in the eyes of the shepherds. The Christmas story from the eyes of the shepherds. And yes, as we look at our lives and we think, who is... Who are we? And I, I think Solomon says, What is man? What is man? That thou art mindful of him. You know, the thing is that God loved us so much that he gave us his son as a present to you and I. Not only for ourselves, but to give to other people. So that's my challenge this morning. That's what we can learn from them, from the shepherds. You know, stand, be attentive to what the, the job that God has given us to do. And that's to give the gospel up. Stand in awe that when you see someone get saved or someone come down as a visitor, they start serving for the Lord. Be in awe about that. Because only God can do those things. And then at the end, understand and know that there is that gift that God has given to us that is for all people. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this morning. Lord, thank you for the Christmas story, Lord, in the eyes of the shepherds, Lord, that we could be attentive, Lord, to the job that you've given us to do. Lord, that we could stand in awe of all that you've done. And Lord, that we can accept the free gift. Lord, I thank you so much for the opportunity you've given me. Lord, I never take it for granted. But what I get to do each and every week, Lord, to preach your word. Lord, to come before your people, Lord, and uh, Lord, I, I, I just, I love what I do, and I get to do, Lord, and I thank you for the folks who came this morning, who weathered the weather, Lord, and the folks who are watching right now, Lord, on, on Facebook, Lord, do ask that they would understand and know what Christmas is more than just themselves, but it's about others, and it's about giving this gift to other people as well. Lord, as we leave, I ask that you would Give us safety as we go home, and Lord, that you would allow us to come back Monday if the weather permits, and Lord, Tuesday for our, our, our evening service there. Lord, we love you, and we thank you so much for what you mean to us. Lord, again, just give us safety as we go home. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen, folks. Thank you again for coming. We cut it short this morning. 
Uh, but I do pray that that was a help to you this morning and it was help to me. The Christmas story through the eyes of the shepherds. And understand, know, our job is to not take this Bible and the words of God and import them to ourselves, but it's to give to other people. Because we give the, the promise that God has given to us, and that's salvation. And if we accept, then others can get to heaven as well. Let people know about it. Take some traction your way out. Uh, again, we'll get to, uh, we'll figure it out tomorrow if we're going to uh, do the decorating or not. If the, the weather permits, we'll do that. And also the ladies' Bible study, if the weather permits, we'll have that as well. But Tuesday night, I'll let you know if we'll move the service or not, but I believe by Tuesday we should be fine. Be here, please, on Tuesday. We've just been having a great time. Uh, again, just be here. Be in the house of the Lord. Uh, don't think one service is going to get you through the week because it won't. Uh, just be here for that. And also next week we'll have our missionary here with us, Miss Sarah. And then also we'll do our Lord's Table and have the right hand of fellowship. So we'll have a busy week next week. We'll be here for it. All right? I love you. The Lord loves you. And you're dismissed. Thank you so much for coming this morning.